4,800, 70 pounds, 27 foot-ish, no slide, bunkhouse, Gulfstream Conquest with a private front bedroom here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, it is missing the awning. You can see a little bit of tatters on it. Actually, this, this camper was here last summer. We sold it to the current owners. They went out and had a good time. Unfortunately, the wind got the better of the awning and uh, it is no longer with us. But they still had a good time camping. They're actually updating and upgrading to something uh, bigger, newer at this time. Now, uh, understand the awning, we are not planning on replace with the dollars that we're asking on this. We've got a pretty entry-level budget price tag on her as a result. Otherwise, it's in pretty solid shape. We're actually going to go through and trim off the remainder of what's left of those awning tatters so it doesn't look terrible going down the road. So again, if, you, if you're not really looking for the awning, if you're okay with no awning or you don't mind replacing something yourself given the dollars we're selling her at, this would be a very good budget piece to either get someone started, get you out of a pop-up or whatever. And when you see a camper like this one with kind of unique stuff going on, it tends to really sort of stick out in your memory. I, I have a fair recollection of this one from last year, which is kind of saying something considering all the different campers that we see come in and out of here uh, in a given year. This one kind of jumped out at me. But what kind of made it jump out at me was all the custom woodwork that went in here. Previous owner uh, was someone who was very skilled with their hands and skilled with working with wood. They put in an all new high gloss tabletop here. You can see they kind of match some of the dinette trim. They had um, uh, new laminate flooring uh, professionally replaced through the entire RV. So there's no carpet in this and it's flooring that's only about two years old through the whole thing. Over here next to the uh, kitchen area, kind of like the uh, dining table, they had this re ridiculously large countertop extension to give you some decent prep space here but also a nice space where if you're sitting on the sofa you could easily set a drink over there this was uh, a little bit older camper they were still using jealousy type windows and that's a word that doesn't seem to mean much to people anymore but these types of windows right here the little triple panes they actually tilt open and they're awesome for getting airflow on a rainy day which is something today's slider windows don't do very well um overall it looks about the same as it looked last year, just again, sans awning. The wind got a hold of the awning. The folks that bought this, I think they were a little newer to camping and they, they you know, they kind of learned a precautionary tale as a result. But again, since the awning is missing, we certainly take that into account when we start pricing campers here at Halet RV. And you are not paying the, the top dollar price uh, tag on something like this with no awning. Um, there's actually a lot of people who just will throw an RV at a permanent site and put like a hard shell awning on it. So who knows, maybe that'll actually work to someone's benefit here. Overall, things look pretty solid, pretty decent here. I like the storage below the dinette. You see the doors there to be able to get to everything. I'm having to take everything up. Sometimes people ask, what is this hump right here? Why did they put that under the dinette? It's the wheel well. You have to remember that sometimes the interior stuff and the exterior stuff need to share a little bit of space. Um, so classic CD stereo. This must have been cutting edge at the time. And looking at the display, I was playing with it earlier, seems to still be in pretty decent working order. And it does have an auxiliary input, so if you just want to, you know, take your phone and connect something to it, you're good to go there. And I like that somebody left the TV mount in. It's, it's like adding a TV to a camper is not the hard part. It's properly securing a TV mount for some people is the scary part because you got to screw into a wall. Well, that's already been done here for you. And look at this owner's manuals despite the years on this thing all those manuals are still here and that's a positive sign to me somebody did update and replace the thermostat though so maybe they uh just wanted one that was digital and easier to read sometimes the old analog ones people just aren't real comfortable with classic single over single bunkhouse before we got a lot of the uh, jack and jill or double over doubles and you can see uh kind of all that woodwork that went into it somebody put a ladder together for this thing which is kind of handy for getting to that upper bunk now in this rear bunk alcove if you will uh there is a, a nice either pantry or closet area here and i love that this is all trimmed out kind of reminds me of a lot of classic coachmans they used to fully trim out like their interior of their door cuts to you know not have splinters or anything like that there are some things there's a lot of things that are much much better now in today's rv production but there are a lot of things like that that i miss in the rv production of yesteryear so 
We've got our uh, shower over here. Now you're kind of getting the benefit of a combination skylight power vent fan, one fixture doing two things. And there are several of these mirrors all over the place to let lots of light through this thing. Decent uh, storage down here below the bathroom counter. And I like the fact that we actually have a bathroom counter. Now it's not just a mirror. You see there actually is a medicine cabinet over here as well. So you do have a place to keep things stored away from the countertop. Um, the dinette and the sofa both can fold down into sleeping areas, so you do maintain maximum sleeping capacity. You can lift the, uh, the seating here, and there's a little storage under that as well. And uh, you can see that this is a, well, before I go too far along, I should have mentioned this sooner when I had a better view of it, but big door side viewing window. So you actually get to look at your campsite and not the neighbors. Now, um, knowing where to look on these things, like above doorways was a key area, I can't find anywhere there's been a leak. There's, I don't see anywhere where this hasn't been well maintained. Again, unfortunately, the folks just had an accident and Mother Nature got the best of them on that awning. I hate to keep going back to that, but that's, I mean, that's just the story of this one. They did go through and replace the mattress, though it looks like they maybe put like a full mattress in here instead of a queen. Because if you notice, I, like, I, I was like, wow, there's a lot of space next to that. Well, you can see the original bed base right here, so you could probably put a little bit bigger mattress in here if you wanted to. All in all, though, I do like this big full length closet with like built in dresser storage down here. Um, you know, that, that more storage is always better than not enough storage. That's just, that's, that's just science. <laughs> so I've talked about the awning to death already. We're going to just kind of cruise on from there. You're probably wondering what is this black line streaking down the front of this thing? Well, it's a wire. Uh, at one point, one of the previous owners installed a backup camera on this thing. What I don't know at the time of this filming is if the monitor, the control module for that thing is still present and accounted for. And for some reason, I'm wanting to say that it was lost before it was traded in last time. So there is a camera on the back of it, but effectively, I think it's kind of inoperable. Uh, so just sort of keep that in mind as you go through. Now, preventative maintenance items, uh, you can see where anywhere that there was like some surface corrosion or something, it was arrested. Folks went through, stopped that, they put a new coat of everything on it to keep that from spreading. And this is exactly how it looked last year, so they obviously did a good job. You can see there's been some heavy resealing around the front and rear corners, and that's good. That's called preventative maintenance. That means that this thing wasn't allowed to just sit and rot and decay. Let's take a look at the tires. I did not do this previously, but I'm not disappointed. Everything here looks pretty good. A little bit. Very minor starting of weather checking on the front tire here. The rear tire looks okay. So uh, you, you might keep an eye on that, depending on where you tow, how you tow, if you're going to keep her parked. But that's why we put these videos together. We give you a nice, clean, clear example of exactly what it is, what it's not, what's in it for you. Uh, a couple owners ago, somebody had this big cargo deck on the back of it. Not sure what kind of camping they did. Maybe they brought along bikes or anything else. I do like that they made it also a spare tire carrier. If you're looking, you can see spare tires down there. And I do believe that it actually was used for bikes because if you get up on the rear wall, you can see a couple dents where maybe cargo or like uh, foot pegs from bicycles or handlebars or something might have scuffed it. It's unfortunate, but it's just a surface abrasion. It's not really hurting anything. So that's kind of the story of this one. Again, very, it's, we're gonna just go ahead and call it something on the budget row, but that doesn't mean like, there's a difference between a bargain type camper and a handyman special. I don't really think this is a handyman special because by and large it's okay. Again, we've talked about the awning, but in terms of the majority function and, and, and structure of the RV, there's nothing really scary to be worried about there. So it's a bargain piece, it's a, it's a scratch and dent, but it's not a handyman special. There's a, there's a very important difference there. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you folks. So, um, Hope you appreciate the uh, honesty, the transparency, the information here. If you like that, give us a call. And if the things that you've seen on this camper, if those are disqualifying factors for you, if you're like, nah, I'm not buying a camper without an awning, I totally get it. That's why I've made such a big deal about talking about it. So buy it with confidence from Halet RV, knowing that you can always get shot straight and get a fair deal here. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.